Israel is at war. Since being attacked by Hamas terrorists from Gaza 11 days ago, Israel has declared its intention to destroy and route out Hamas from Gaza and end their terrorist rule. About 300 soldiers, officers, and police lost their lives trying to defend against the October 7th onslaught by terrorists, bloodthirsty intruders who massacred about 1,000 civilian men, women, and children and took as many as 200 hostages to Gaza. Most of the civilians in the south have evacuated from the border. The Air Force and artillery have been pounding Hamas targets in Gaza more intensely by the day. The army stands ready to invade. At the same time, security forces are keeping watchful eyes on the north. Civi civilians there, too, have been removed after days of deadly cross-border exchanges with the large terrorist group, Hezbollah. Well, joining us to discuss our reserve brigadier general, former IDF spokesman and former cabinet minister, Nachman Shai, the calming voice of the IDF during the Gulf War, and former Israeli ambassador to the United States and former deputy foreign minister, Dani Ayalon. General Shai, let me start with you. You've grown up and, grow, and, and even grown older, experiencing Israeli wars and operations of all kinds. How would you describe the current threat and challenge? In, in general, uh, the whole situation, not necessarily the, the war itself, is unprecedented. Just to mention that uh, since the war broke out, uh, there was no one single day without uh, an American official, uh, um, the presence of an American official in the country, and tomorrow President Biden is coming. Uh, we, um, um, we have never, of course, experienced a massacre like you um, described, and the potential of, uh, for, for regional war is probably pretty high because otherwise the Americans were not uh, pushing their uh, two air carriers into the, the region. And uh, as I said before, the entire American apparatus uh, is, uh, is surrounding us, including, of course, uh, an aerial train of uh, weapons, ammunition, and whatever needs Israel has right now. So this is something that, uh, as you said, I grew old with wars and terror attacks and all kinds of military operation, but I've never, never seen uh, something similar to that one, even the Yom Kippur War, even the Yom Kippur War. Ambassador I alone, as Nachman Shai just said, President Biden could be in Israel, as expected in Israel as early as tomorrow, that we've even given a time of 10 a.m. The aircraft carriers here, the equipment's been sent, sending signs that the U.S. is fully invested in this event. How do you think that they view the conflict? And do we really need the United States to fight a war against Hamas? Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative. Available on the web, Android, and Apple. Well, we need the United States, not necessarily to fight the war. I mean, we can win the war, but it's going to be more costly. But the idea is actually to prevent a war with Hezbollah and just to let... Uh, uh, the IDF uh, clear up uh, Gaza, and uh, I would just like, would like to say, uh, still, we've had many, many wars before, and uh, Nachman uh, mentioned the Yom Kippur War, and, you know, he was a great convoy in the first Gulf War, but this is the first war between ideas. The other wars were between countries, and here we have the diabolical, there is no other word to describe, the uh, Hamas, ISIS, jihadist uh, movement, uh, jihadist uh, action, and it's uh, worldwide, unfortunately. So uh, I think what the Americans are doing is actually they are drawing the line in the sand where on the one hand are the jihadists, which are led today by the Iranians, with all their proxies all over, and the Iranians are backed, unfortunately, by uh, powers like China and uh, like uh, Russia. 
And on the other line, it's the rest of us, the free world led by the United States. So the Americans understand that a lot more is at stake here than just Gaza and just the Hamas. The Hamas has to be eliminated for unconditional uh, surrender, just like the Nazis uh, uh, in 1945. And, and then we can think of the days ahead. General Shai, I want to take us back to the ground around Gaza currently. By all reports, the morale of the troops is very high. They know the job at hand. There's been over 100% uh, reporting uh, by, by reservists. They know how the job is going to be difficult, and yet they're ready to go in to Gaza. It's a tough mission. Can they accomplish it, and how long is it going to take? It's a very good question, because uh, of, course the, we, of course they or we can accomplish that, but the question is always, always the question being asked for, for what's the price? The price we mean in, in human life. Uh, we, we assume there'll be quite a number of uh, casualties, and we, do, we would like to avoid it. Uh, but the question, how can we reach that goal that set by, by the government of uh, destroying the Hamas government uh, and specifically the, their military apparatus or the military machine? That's not simple. Nachman, I wanted to ask yeah. Ambassador Ayalon exactly about sure. that. I know that in, currently in Gaza, there are hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fleeing to the south. Uh, they're reaching schools of the UN for safety. But a lot of them are going to reach the Egyptian border in Rafiah. I actually heard you discussing this issue a couple of days ago, and immediately I sent you a message and said, I hadn't heard that point before. What do you think is going to happen with these hundreds of thousands of Palestinians that are streaming to the south? Well, there are two options. Either the, the Egyptians let them freely in in an orderly fashion so they can really care for them uh, with the aid of the international community, just like the Turks did for the four million um, uh, Syrians that were flying uh, from the butchering of Assad. Or they, there will be a stampede. There is no other way. And we would very much like to see and uh, the, the, uh, the well-being of uninvolved and, and civilians. I think this is also what the Americans would like to see. And I believe that when uh, President Biden comes here today, uh, tomorrow, when he will also visit uh, Jordan, probably Egypt, this is the point he will press upon uh, al-Sisi. Uh, Sisi will lose nothing by receiving them. He can get a lot of money for that, which Egypt needs. Uh, they are not in the midst of Egyptian population. They are far out, and it could be only temporarily until they can come back. We're actually looking on the screen. We can see the Rafiah crossing where hundreds, if not thousands, of Palestinians are already assembling. I think uh, some foreign nationals are being uh, are taken to safety. But that could be a border with hundreds of thousands of people overrun, literally. I don't know if the Egyptians could even deal with the swarm that could be coming in the next 48 hours, even. Exactly. This is why uh, they, they should be prepared. They should not ignore it. They cannot just... Uh you know, put their head in, in the sand, because it's coming. It's coming, and they better be right. prepared. Nachman, if I could, I want to go back to those no. troops on the ground, because everything that you said before led me to think that one way or another, in order to get rid of Hamas, the troops have to go in. Some of them are reservists, um, others are, are regular soldiers, but they're fully mobilized. They're ready to go. How long can we keep them on the border with the morale being as high as it is, as it is and how long before, you know, in, in these current days, they're just targets. They're having uh, all sorts of mortars and other things fired at them. I think that the country and the army is ready to go. How long can we keep it waiting? Well, uh, before the Six-Day War, they've been waiting for three weeks. It became a major uh, burden on, on Israel's economy. I guess it would be the same situation. We have over 360,000 uh, troops uh, mobilized, stationed all around the uh, uh, borders, and waiting for the order to come, which is, which is not that simple. We can wait 
uh, we can wait and uh, we'll have to talk, talk about economic uh, implications of this present situation. And I guess the Americans uh, will be involved in, in helping us to overcome that period. Uh, but but you, can't, you can't just wait and see. I guess they take it as, as they usually do. They train, they prepare themselves, they complete whatever they miss in terms of their gears or whatever. Whatever is missing is being provided right now. So they are ready.